friends, it's Tess, this is Wander Wealthy, and today I'm going to give you my top tips for renting your first apartment. Nothing better than cold coffee, and not iced coffee, just old cold coffee. Getting ready to rent your first apartment is a lot harder than the world makes it out to be. There are a lot of things that you need to know from how much you can afford to why your potential landlord is asking you for your social security number. And that is what I want to help you uncover today. So I have compiled nine common questions or just things I think you should probably look out for before you sign on the dotted line. Before I dive into this wonderful list, I just need to tell you, especially if you're new here, to make sure you hit that subscribe button because if you're someone who's interested in personal finance, personal growth, or travel, that's what we talk about here on Wander Wealthy. And I don't want you to miss out on the future vids that I upload on a weekly basis. And if you're watching this video and you're like, huh, I like this, or you find yourself just nodding along or taking notes, then go ahead and hit that thumbs up button so I know to make more videos like this. Plus, it really supports my channel and I'll be forever grateful. All right, let's get in. The first thing that you're probably going to wish you would have known if you need an apartment like ASAP, or if you're months away, this is the best thing to know, is that yes, in order to get an apartment, you will probably have to have some form of good credit history. This is exactly why your landlord is asking you to fill out a sheet that has your social security number on it because most landlords or rental companies are going to want to pull your credit history so that they can get a feel for how credible or financially responsible you are with making payments on time. One thing that you can do before you even get on your apartment search, maybe you're midway through your last year of college or you're just not quite yet to move out of mom and dad's is check your credit score. You can do this through free platforms like Credit Karma or CreditSesame.com. I'll link both of them below. Or through any major credit card that you utilize, usually credit cards will offer you a free look at your credit score. Checking your credit score now does not hurt your credit. You are fully entitled to knowing what three numbers are your defining one. Now here's the thing, if you don't have a credit score because you have no credit history, this was me. And there are a few ways where you can get around this when you're trying to go rent a place. For me, I actually had a roommate planned for when I moved to Chicago. She was already in Chicago, I was still home in Iowa. So she took the onus to go find an apartment for the two of us. In that process, she found one, she met with the landlords, signed a lease agreement, they pulled her credit and we were approved. I'm not exactly sure how it ended up happening. I may have even filled out information for them to pull my credit, but I'm almost positive I had no history. In that case, whether they did or did not pull that my credit, I'm pretty sure they probably just went with my roommate's credit and decided that she was responsible enough to make sure that I was responsible enough. Now in this situation, you really need to have a roommate that you trust and luckily we had a great and still do have a great relationship where she could trust that I was going to pay her my portion of the rent and then she would make the full rent payment. But again, you gotta make sure that they're good people. Another option is to have a parent or a relative co-sign for you on your lease agreement. That way the landlord knows that maybe you don't have a score yet, but you know, you're just out of college and you haven't had a lot of financing. And then they have someone else to go to in case you forget to make your payment. And finally, an additional potential workaround would be to not necessarily rent through bigger companies who definitely have it in their regular protocol to run a potential tenant's credit. So finding people on Craigslist or just through a family friend, someone that you know, could be your best bet for getting a rental. Now, if you're watching this well in advance and you have a few months to start building that credit score, then here is what you should do. Get a credit card and put a very small expense on it. Buy a pack of gum or put your Netflix subscription on it and then have it automatically withdraw the payment amount from your bank account every single month so that it pays the full balance on time and in full. This will show the credit bureaus that you are a responsible credit citizen. You have credit available, but you only use a very tiny amount and you pay it off 
every single time it comes due. After a few months, the credit bureaus will like that history and they will bump up your score. And it provides now your potential landlords with more information on your ability to be financially responsible. Again, all the resources I mentioned here about credit, which can be a confusing topic, are going to be linked below and you can get access to all of them and they're all free. All right, moving on to number two. I get this question all the time. How much should I pay in rent? My standard answer is always, it depends, but there's some good rules of thumb for you to know. First rule of thumb is the 50-30-20 rule. This is a rule for budgeting in general, or I guess cash flow management in general. It states that 50% of your income should be used for fixed expenses. These are things like your rent, also utilities, cable and internet bills, cell phone bills, debt payments, don't forget about those, insurance, car payments, which are debt payments, and anything else that you pay on a fixed monthly basis or even annual or semi-annual. So all of those added up will and should only equal 50% or less of your monthly income. A portion of that would be your rent. The less you can live on, the more you can save and your future self will thank you for it. I love the saying, live like a college student as long as it's socially acceptable. And while you're in your early 20s, it's totally socially acceptable. You don't have to get that one bedroom apartment that's way more expensive just because you feel like you need to be an adult now. You can be just as much an adult with three other roommates and less fancy furniture because you care about your financial future. Now, I'm not saying this to judge people who live in their own apartments. I live in my own apartment. But if you're willing to live a little bit uncomfortably for a handful of years, you can live amazingly comfortably for the rest of your life. And I wouldn't say that's the same case for most human beings. Now, two additional rules of thumb that specifically relate to how much of your monthly income should you spend on rent are the 30% or one third rule and the 25% rule. This just depends how conservative you wanna be. So. Some people will say you should only spend one third of your monthly income on your monthly rent costs. This would equal about 30% of your monthly salary. Side tip, I'm talking about salary after taxes and benefits because uh, let's not kid ourselves, we still have to pay taxes. Since 30% is under that 50% fixed, it's saying that 30% should go towards rent, and so the remaining 20% you're going to have to use for everything else that you spend money on on a fixed basis. Now, other experts will say that you should only spend 25% of your income on rent. It just really depends how flexible you can be with your budget and your fixed expenses. But just remember that 25% or 30%, whatever it is spent on rent, the remaining of that 50% fixed is going towards all the other things that you need to pay for. Now, tip number two B is to ask the potential landlord or whoever is showing you the apartment, what the price of rent includes. Because sometimes the price of rent could include utilities or other things that you would otherwise have to pay for. And that can help you in your budgeting decisions when you're sitting down and going, okay, so 30% of my income has to be this rental price, but it also includes utilities, so that takes out of the remaining 20% bracket. And so on and so forth. Tip number three is just spiraling off of the last statement, which is to get an estimate on the utility bills that you'll be paying. While you're getting that rental apartment walkthrough, make sure to ask the person who's showing you the apartment what the current tenants pay on average for utilities every month and what those utilities include. You'll wanna know what the general area costs are for cable and internet, but also the utilities of the specific unit like gas, electric, and sometimes even water. And finally, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself some renter's insurance and you can get some quotes from various insurance companies online so that you can add that into your knowledge bank. Renter's insurance is so important to have and it's not that expensive, but do yourself a service and protect your belongings. Tip number four is, not gonna help us get any cheaper. It's trying to figure out the cost for additional things that you might require in order to live your life in your new 
or potentially new rental. Whether you have a car and you need a place to park or a garage to put it in or you need storage space, these could all be additional costs or they could be included in your rental fees. You also wanna know if you need to pay for garbage pickup. And finally, if you have any pets, they might charge you a pet fee. But getting an idea of what all these fees could potentially be for you is also going to help you determine how much you really can spend or afford when it comes to finding yourself a place to live. Tip number five is to save and pre-save because unfortunately, move-in date is probably gonna be the most expensive one. You're most likely gonna have to put down a deposit for the landlord to keep in case you damage anything. And that could be anywhere from one month's worth of rent to three months or just an arbitrary number that they come up with. Don't worry, you'll get this back at the end of your rental agreement, but you need to at least have the funds to be able to front that. Along with the deposit, you're also going to need to make that first month's rent payment. So I know it's an expensive time. And beyond that, there's also the move-in costs. They might charge you a move-in fee. They might charge you administrative fees to process the paperwork. There's a lot of little small fees, but also if you have movers moving your stuff, which I highly recommend because it's very wonderful, can be very expensive. Then you're gonna have to add that up too. Again, those move-in costs are going to come at you fast and hard. So set up a separate bank account and start stashing away some cash for this particularly expensive time of your life. Tip number six is to find yourself a roommate. I know it can be totally sexy to finally have this idea and vision of you living on your own in your very own apartment, but the reality is Moving into a new city can be very expensive, but if you want to live on less and stash away more cash for a brighter financial future, then finding a roommate is a great option for you and it can significantly decrease your costs. Tip number seven is all about furnishing your apartment. Now, if you do choose to go the roommate route, then you're gonna wanna have communication, which is key. What I did with my first roommate is we actually came up with a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet of all the things we thought we would need for our space. And then we both individually went in and filled out what we had and what we could contribute. That way, if we had duplicates, we didn't both have to worry about bringing them. And if we had things that we knew we needed to acquire, we could come to an agreement on who would buy what and then who would own that thing. Now, if you are moving into your own place and you're wanting to furnish it with the most beautiful, well interior designed elements, hold your horses. I've heard so many people talk about the mistakes that they made with their first apartment by furnishing it on a credit card and that can very much hurt you as you all know. I would try to find as many hand-me-downs that your family can provide or go to a used furniture store. Buy something that isn't going to totally break the bank and will be a good placeholder until you've been able to save up for that amazing sofa from a West Elm that you've been dreaming about. This is something I recently did as I was tasked to fully furnish my own own condo after my old roommate moved out and it was the best decision I made. I made a list of all the things I thought I would need with the expected prices or the actual prices if I had already found something and put it on my wish list. And then I opened up a separate bank account specifically for home decor. Every month I would stash away some money into that separate bank account and when I hit a monetary level of something that I could afford, I would transfer that money out into my checking account and go buy it. That way I never had to go in debt for the things I wanted and I found that I actually was able to furnish my place relatively quickly. Tip number eight is just a great money saving tip and that is to understand your thermostat and the parameters of the degrees that you should have during different times of the year. I know in the winter you're gonna wanna crank that heat up to 75, but your wallet will be crying. And in the summer when you wanna crank your air conditioning down to 60 after you get in from a hot day, you're just not going to be able to afford any anything else. Do yourself a service and look up what the recommended thermostat settings are for each time of year and save yourself some money. And finally, tip number nine is to have a clear understanding of the terms on your lease agreement or your rental agreement or contract. Want to Airbnb that spare bedroom? It may not be illegal. Want to move out ASAP because you can't stand your roommate? You might be stuck paying three or six months of rent. Want to get a dog? Good luck. There are 
certain rules and regulations that are within your rental agreement that you might want to consider understanding. You want to make sure before you sign on the dotted line that you do a full review and you have that knowledge, but also keeping that rental or lease agreement around as your lifestyle changes will be useful for you. It's also a great way to know when it's time to move on to the next place, even if you love it, but your lifestyle just doesn't allow for it. And those are my nine money tips for renting your first apartment. I hope they were helpful. If they were, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Let me know what tip you particularly like and are thankful for, or what additional tips you might have for future viewers down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I want you to come back and hang out with us every single week. I upload new videos all about personal growth, personal finance, and travel on a weekly basis, and I don't want you to miss a thing. And if you'd like to hang out with me even more on a deeper level, you can join the Wealthy Wanderers private Facebook community or email list. Go to wanderwealthy.com slash FB to choose which way you want to sign up. You can do both. And get in on the group where I provide exclusive content straight from my very own face. Until I see you next time or in the group, I hope you wander wealthy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.